You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for this wonderful evening, Lord God, that uh, we can be together, Lord, even in the spirit. We can worship you together. We can listen to your word together. We can engage our hearts, Lord God, together. And, and I pray, Lord God, that tonight you will just begin to speak a message that will, that will help us re-engage our hearts, first of all, to you, and then to, to our family, to our work, to, to our loved ones, Lord God, to those of us who are studying, Lord God, to, to, our, to our study, to our school. Father, I pray that uh, as, we, as we submit to your calling for us of being a voice, a prophetic voice to this, this day and age, this generation, Lord, I pray that, Lord, we will, we will find our hearts in you. Lord, override uh, my preparation. I just commit everything to you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I acknowledge, Lord God, that we need you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. No? So, again, happy anniversary to Destiny Baguio for celebrating their five years and to us, no, 23 years as a, a Destiny as a whole. No? So, in, in, the, in the course of our month-long anniversary, and of course, no, uh, this, this Sunday we're talking about the anniversary of Destiny, uh, Destiny uh, Baguio, no? we have been uh, doing this series about I am the voice. Yan yung nakikita nyo dito sa likod ko, no? That is the theme for our anniversary. And uh, I'd like to start off uh, the verse from which that theme came from. John chapter 1, verse 23. Okay? And John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord. No? And and yun nga, itong si John the Baptist, no, the one who actually said, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness, he had this extraordinary call. In fact, it was, uh, it was an amazing call. No, he ne- no, no other person in the world no, was given this privilege, was given this no, unique calling. And what is that? No? John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. In other words, before Jesus came, Jesus, Jesus didn't just simply appear into the scene. No, Jesus didn't just basically start off his ministry. Somebody came before him to prepare the way for him. Just, just to put things in context, no? uh, before Jesus came into the picture, no, the last prophet of God in the nation of Israel was the prophet Malachi. Okay? And, and, and what I mean by the last prophet, kasi ano mga panahon na yon, when God speaks to people, particularly the nation of Israel, He sends them prophets no, to give them direction, to give them vision about the future, to give them warning, to rebuke them if they, if they had to be corrected and rebuke. No? And, and you know, to give them a word. Okay? But then, si Malachi no, happened to be the last prophet. In other words, so God, God even told that there's going to be a famine for God's word. And for the longest time, the people of Israel has been, in a way, a spiritual famine, a spiritual drought. They haven't heard God in a very, very long time. Okay? And so they were, in a way, thirsty for a move of God. They were thirsty for God's Word. Not that they didn't have the Bible. Not, you, know, you need to understand, they already had the Old Testament in a way. No, they had the law and, and uh, a good, you know, the prophets. No? But then, Somehow, things got silent. And after 400 years, a new day suddenly dawned. You know? But before Jesus came, John the Baptist prepared the way. And said, I am the way. I'm, I'm, I mean, I am the voice. Crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Anong significance nito ngayon? Okay, so that happened during the time of Jesus. But maybe you're asking, so, Pastor, what is the significance of this for this season? Okay. We need to understand, Jesus promised that He's going to come back again. Okay. There is no question, Jesus is coming back again. Tinatawag natin, second coming. 
no there's the term of judgment day the end of the world now pag sinabi nating end of the world that that may sound scary that may sound frightening and dami nating naiisip siguro no na how the world will end will it end in a zombie apocalypse no? or a worse pandemic than what we are experiencing right now no could it be na an asteroid would hit the planet and basically obliterate all life no in the world an, an, or, or a nuclear war we don't we don't really know okay, how the world is going to end but what we know Jesus is coming and, and in fact yung, yung end of the world is not something to really be afraid of if you are a believer in fact the early christians no were hopeful <laughs> can you imagine no you, actually they were hopeful that the end no comes no comes quickly because that is a looking forward to them no being being with God in heaven and that is ganun dapat yung ating pananaw when it comes to the coming of Christ we should be excited we should not be fearful that Christ is coming i mean ito nga yun ano the only reason that somebody would be afraid of something that is coming is it is because they are not prepared okay for example for those of you students or lahat naman tayo nagestudyante no bakit tayo takot sa exam <laughs> yung totoo niyan kaya ka lang naman takot sa exam takot sa exam is because hindi ka pahanda bakit may mga taong takot magasawa hindi o takot sa relationship kasi hindi ka pahanda eh pero alam mo yung taong handa sa relationship they cannot wait to get married they cannot wait to be with that person because they're prepared di ba yung, yung, yung isang babe yung isang for example buntis yung nabuntis na hindi talaga sila handa, nakakatakot yon. Pero, yung mga, yung nabuntis, hindi by accident, pero talagang gusto na nila magka-baby. No? Yes, there's a lot of, in a way, uncertainties. No? Talagang uh, somehow, hindi mo pa rin alam anong mangyayari, paano ko ba palalaki itong batang ito, and it's really a step of faith. But then, eh, when, when you are, when, pag handa ka, no? na, yung mga nanay na handa sa kanilang baby, they're actually what excited no they're excited about the fact that they are going to have a baby okay so the question is are we prepared but but the other question is rather than just being prepared is it possible that you and i as believers just like don john the baptist we are the ones who are called to prepare the way no, I remember what Jesus said about no, the sec- His second coming, no, about the end of the world. No, paano daw ito mangyayari? When the gospel of the kingdom has been preached to all nations, then the end will come. In other words, now who, who is tasked to do that? Who is tasked to tell people about this good news that, that, that Christ no, has come and died on the cross to, 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 for the forgiveness of sins? Who is tasked to do that? It is, it is the church. It is you and I. So technically, we are the ones ushering Jesus is coming. Okay? We are the ones called, just like John the Baptist has been called to, to be a voice in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. No? We are to be that same voice as well. We are to be a prophetic voice you know, to, to, to tell the world, to tell people that, hey, there is hope in Christ. Jesus can change your life. He is real. He is not just a religion. No. We are to be that voice crying out in the wilderness. We are to be a, a, a prophetic voice to this generation. And I believe that is such an awesome calling. No. To be a voice in this, in this day, in the day and age. Okay? And that's why napakahalaga nito ano, itong, itong uh, uh, ministry ni John the Baptist because similarly, we are in the same Ministry. Sabi nga dun sa sa Romans, no. How can they, no? How can they be saved unless they believe? How can they believe unless somebody preach to them? Okay? How can they? Pre- how can no? How can somebody preach until un- unless somebody is sent? You know, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? No, and that is. That is our responsibility as believers, as Christians. No, and I don't know about you. I get I get excited about that. Okay? Now, the thing is, when you talk about the voice, 
where do we where does one get their voice narinig niyo na ba yung uh, yung parang katagang ano eh uh, yung isa, isang manganganta a singer no sabi ang, ang galing niya kumanta not not only because he has a beautiful voice but you have have you ever heard someone because he sings from her heart okay or have you ever been told just speak from your heart no interestingly yung boses natin yung distinct boses natin supposedly begins with the state of our hearts okay i want us to no and that's why if i if i were to give a, a title to this series no so uh, this is uh, we are still in i am the voice series and the specific title would be your heart your voice your heart your voice look at matthew chapter 12 verses 33 to 37 matthew chapter 12 verses 33 to 37 The NIV version says, sabi dito, Jesus is saying this verse, sabi niya, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. Okay? Malalaman mo daw ang puno sa pamamagitan ng kanyang bunga. And then, then no? And then sabi dito, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? Now, Jesus was confronting the, the Pharisees, no, the Sadducees, because of their hypocrisy. Sabi, tinawag, actually, you, you think about Jesus. Jesus is, is quiet. Ano eh. You know, he will not mince words. Can you imagine, this is Jesus calling people, mga, no, mga anakay ng aas, mga anakay ng ulupong. Those are very strong words coming from Jesus. Like, Lord, is that really you? No, kasi minsan na picture na si Jesus, you know, would be so nice, would be so, no. <laughs> Kaya nga sometimes, the problem is, I think, ano eh, uh, sa- the problem with some Christians, we're actually more nicer than Jesus. But you know, Jesus was not afraid to confront people, no, specifically those who are, yun nga eh, no, who are faking it. No? Sabi niya, you brood of vipers. How can you say, how can you who are evil say anything good? No? Sabi ni Jesus, come on. Okay? Paano kayo ng mga masasama can actually try to project no, being good? For the mouth speaks, now check this out. Ito na, no? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. In other words, yung boses mo, yung sinasabi mo, hindi, no, hindi yan, ano eh, hindi yan pwedeng disconnected sa puso mo eh. Naturally, no, in the natural way of things, no, okay, the things that you actually say are a product of what is in your heart. Hindi mo pwedeng, well, maybe for, for quite a season, you would try to lie, you would try to project something else. But then, yun nga eh, no, kung ano yung punong-puno ka, yun yung lalabas sa'yo. Okay? Your voice, your message no, is a reflection of the state of your heart. The reason that, I'm just thinking about this, the reason why there are some people, their message or their voice is, no, accounts for nothing is because there's really nothing in their heart. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever talked to people na sabi na, yun nga eh, ano, mema lang. Yung term nyo ngayon, di ba, sabaw lang. No, kasi kaya nga, bakit, bakit maraming mema? Kasi t- technically, wala talaga laman yung puso eh. No? Mema lang talaga. Eh, there's really nothing there in their heart. There's no substance. No? Eh, so sabi dito ni Jesus, no, what, no, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Eh? A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored in him. Kung ano daw yung naipon sa'yo, kung ano daw yung punong-puno ka, yun yung lalabas sa'yo, yung ilalabas mo. Okay? Bakit? No, meron ba kayong mga nakausap na mga tao na parang mayat-maya talaga, puro, puro bitterness, puro hate, puro pagmumura lumalabas sa kanila. Parang wala silang sentence na hindi sila nagmumura. You need to understand, it is linked up. It all starts in their heart. No? The reason they're, 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 they're saying those things, no, what they're voicing out, it's because of the state of hearts. No? 
I tell you now, now check this out sabi ni Jesus but I tell you tell you that everyone will have to give an account to the day of judgment for every empty word that they have spoken for by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned have you ever dati no nagtataka ako bakit ano bakit pag kunyari may inaaresto okay naalala ko may na, meron ako na witness na inaaresto eh no and, ta- and Narinig, nakikita lang natin yung sa, sa police, eh, di ba? Parang sa mga movies. Pero ako, mayroon ako nakita lang yung actual na inaresto, no? At talagang binasahan siya nung ano ba yun? Miranda rights ba yun, ano? Sabi, tapos pala yung sinasabi nung police, no? Okay? Uh, you have the right to be silent. Okay? Anything that you say may be used against you. And check this out, no? Hindi police ang nagpauso, no? This is, no, Jesus was saying, hey, You need to be careful about the things that you say. No? Because you're going to give an account. Now, you know what? I think it, it's about time we really take this word seriously. No, marami, kahit ako, siguro, no, sino dito mga, may mga bagay kayong sinabi na after a while, you actually regret it. And how you wish that you could take it back, di ba? No, so, ba't ko ba sinabi yun? Ba't ko ba na-post-post pa yun? No, pero yun, the moment kasi sinabi mo, no, it's it's already there, eh? And then you have to give an account of that. Now, but check this out. Every word that you have said, no, you if, empty words, sabi, you will give an account on judgment day. For by your words you will be acquitted. In other words, it is by your words that you will be justified, that you are proved to be righteous, and by your words you will be condemned. Can you imagine no, that that the way that we're going to be judged is, is no is about you know the, the the words the voice you know the message that comes out of us by your words by your message by your voice you will be justified you will be found righteous and by your words you will be condemned okay? that's why I think we need to we need to really consider what's coming out of us what you no know, are we really that voice That is calling, no, calling this generation to come to know the Lord. No, ano, ano yung boses mo? Ano yung tinig mo sa sa generation na to? May makalang ba? Or are you uh, the voice of bitterness and hate? Ay, no, may ano mga voice of pride? Or you, are, or you are the voice, or you the voice of hope? Are you the voice of truth? I know about you. I want to be God's voice in this generation. Okay? Pero yun nga, lahat ng yun, nakaling sa puso. Okay? You cannot separate the two. In other words, no, your voice begins with your heart. It starts with your heart. I want you to read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 sabi sa uh, ESV version keep your heart with all vigilance vigilance for from it flows the springs of life okay? in some translations i think NIV or NASB sabi dito guard your heart for out of it flows the things of life no you know i know In, 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 in fact, in some translations, say sabi doon, above all else. I like that part. Above all else. In other words, more than anything, kung mayroon daw isang bagay na dapat mong pag-ingatan, dapat mong bantayan, bantayan mo puso mo. Bakit? Mula sa puso mo, dyan luma, no? It flows what? Your life. No? Your message, your voice. Okay. In Ezekiel 1831, sabi ni, ni God dito, no, talking to the nation of Israel, rid yourselves of all offenses that you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. And this is how important no, getting a new heart is. Nga, diba? Imagine you, you go to a doctor and you find that you had a, have a, let's say, a heart condition. I mean, Maraming organ sa katawan natin na napakahalaga pero I think nothing is more important as the heart. Eh. No? Ah, pag kunyari mataas ang cholesterol mo, may blockage sa puso mo, hindi pwedeng ipag no, hindi pwedeng ipagpaliban mo 'yan eh. Kailangan ayusin mo 'yan. 
Okay? And, and, and tonight, no, we're gonna have a heart check. Destiny Baggy, we're gonna have a heart check. Okay? So we're gonna get, no, we're gonna get a new heart. Okay? So let's just talk about the heart for a while. Ano ba yung heart, no? The heart is, no, just, just to give us with a working definition of the heart. The heart is the deep-seated but voluntary preference of the mind. In the Bible, the heart and the mind always go together. Kaya nga, di ba, when, when we say, I love you with all my heart. Of course, it's, it's not really the heart, that, that, the physical heart that we're talking about, but the spiritual heart, the emotional heart. You don't actually say to a person, I love you with my mind. Although, totoo yun eh. But then, the heart and the mind, they're, they're they're connected. No, in other words, when you talk about the heart, it is where our choices begin. No, uh, you know, it's it's the deep-seated voluntary preference or yung mga yung yung preference mo of your mind, what you what you prefer. The heart, the spiritual heart, is basically you no know, the fountain of life. You know, guard your heart because out of out of your heart comes your life. It lies behind all its uh, oh, it's, uh, it lies behind all its other voluntary emotions, desires from which they, they take their charge. So, in other words, it's, it's, so I, I remember Rick Warren saying that it is the bundle of motivations that we have. No, in other words, yung puso natin nagdidikta ng what motivates you, what you desire, what gets you excited. Diba? Bakit may mga tao that they, so, they get excited about one thing while others may, may not, you know, See that thing as exciting. Kunyari, basketball. Some of you, the moment I said that, you're like, yeah! Eh? Or, or biking, yan, come on. No, let's do this. Eh? But then yung iba parang, wala lang. But then when I say like, singing. No, maybe, or, or ito, subject na lang, subject. No, pag sinabi ko yung ibang English, yes. Yung iba parang medyo kinabahan, di ba? <laughs> yung mga walang, walang English, walang baon, di ba? Pag sinabi mo, math, nako, ako kakabahan ako noon. Because it's, no, apparently, iba-iba yung, iba-iba yung puso natin eh. Iba-iba yung heart natin. But then also, when you talk about the heart, it is a choice. Okay? It's not only the things that gets you excited, it's not only your desires, but then, the heart talks about something that is also intentional. Okay? Kaya nga, sinabi, no? sinabi ni, ni, ni Jesus, di ba, what are the two, sorry, uh, when may nagtanong kay Jesus Christ, what is the greatest commandment? And this is what he said, sabi niya, love the Lord your God with all your heart. No, it's not just something that you just, parang, okay, no, baka sabihin kasi na iba, well, apparently, God doesn't make me excited. Or the Bible doesn't get me excited. So, does, does, does that mean that that's okay? No, no, no. May mga bagay na naturally binigay sa atin ng Lord that we are excited about, but at the same time, there are things that we need to choose. Okay? No? At the seed of our heart is a seed of choice. No? It's the ultimate choice of our mind. And we can, okay, yun nga, a lot of people think in terms of love, akala nila love is just a feeling that you feel for somebody. Natural. No, no, no. And then that's why a lot of relationships, a lot of marriages are failing and are falling apart. No, Divorce rate is at all-time high. Kahit dito sa Pilipinas na walang divorce, ang tindi nung maraming mga nag- naghihiwalay na lang, maraming broken families. No, Kasi nga, yung yung definition ng lang love no no is based on what just a feeling apparently di now excited para sa so that means i don't love you anymore no 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 okay when you talk about the heart when we talk about love love is a matter of choice it is a choice it doesn't mean that that yun nga, okay no meron meron yung parang sometimes you're just naturally excited but then again also how many of you have brought yourself to a place where you got excited again because you intentionally wanted to be excited for that thing. Okay. So, no. In a in 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, sabi dito, For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Galing nung sinabi ni Paul, no? For Christ's love, it is the love of God that compels. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng word na compel? It is the love of God that, that moves him. Okay? And hindi ito yung parang to compel is not something that parang you just drag yourself into or you push your... But then, it's, it's that love that, that moves him. Okay? I, I just like to state a couple of things about, about you know, this, this When you talk about the heart, usually nga we, we associate it with the term love as well. So, we talk about the heart, we talk about love, and, and what I, what I, just, I just like to share some ideas that I got from, from uh, my pastor, Pastor Rich, about, about this, this concept of, of heart and love. Number one, love does not give up. Love does not give up. Okay? Yun nga, sabi ko nga kanina, no, nakakalungkot kasi maraming tao, they end up giving up. They quit. They quit on their work. They quit on their school. Okay? They quit on their relationships. They quit on family. They quit on church. They quit on God. But when you talk about real love, okay, a love that 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 you know springs from 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 a heart, from our hearts, no. La, real love is a love that does not give up. Okay, you know, uh, when I when I officiate weddings, no, I usually I start off the the ceremony with with reciting you know, the love chapter. Okay, that's that's how I do weddings, no? and I would read from First Corinthians chapter thirteen, no. Okay, and, and, and define love. Love is patient and love is kind. Love is not rude. It is not irritable. It does not rejoice in, in what is wrong. And then it's happening on love. No? Never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. Love never fails. It never gives up. It never gives up. Okay? Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not be discouraged in doing good, for in due time, we will reap if we don't become weary. Okay? Ang ganda nung ano, exhortation dito ni Paul no, as he writes to the, to the no, Christians in Galatia. No? Sabi niya, let's not be discouraged in doing what is good, because in due time, we will reap. Okay. It's, it's interesting to note that yun nga, sometimes yung mga nagigive up, ha, nagigive up tayo sa mga bagay na paggawa ng mabuti. No? Bakit yung mga masasama hindi napapagod gumawa ng kasamaan? Pero yung mga gumagawa ng kabutihan, parang bakit minsan yun yung, ano, parang yun yung, ano, parang yun yung nagigive up. Okay? Alam nyo, actually, I was, uh, what's this? I was listening to uh, the Bible study of uh, no, the students of destiny that you know, they were, and, and, and during that it was being led by my wife and they had this this uh, this I think they just this this week lang yun, you know, they were having discussion about you no know, suffering and and uh, and yun nga, no, parang bakit bakit minsan gusto mo sumuko ay merong temptation na sumuko kasi merong tendency merong merong thought no, na the devil tries to lie to us in terms of parang pag gumagawa ka kasi ng mabuti, lugi ka eh. <laughs> diba? Parang how is it that they can no, do these things and get away with it and enjoy it? No? And so, parang naisip mo tuloy, dahil gumagawa ka ng mabuti, you are, no, you are parang ikaw yung dirado. But the reality, no, that, that is a lie. That's not the truth. No? People who do good, sabi dito, there's a promise here. In due time, you will reap if you don't become tired. And I would like to encourage everyone, don't get tired of doing what is good. 
Okay? There is a benefit. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He promised to reward us. No, the, 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 in fact, when you talk about the Christian life, it is always a story of of people who won't give up, of people who would endure. In the book of Revelations, no, several times yung team ng Revelations, to those who will endure, to those who will not give up, to those who will persevere until the end. No, ito na nga yung panahon na apparently may mga sumusuko eh. Sabi ni Jesus, no, in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. Maraming, maraming manla, manlulupay-pay, maraming susukuan yung, pag, yung pananampalataya nila. Maraming susuku, susukuan ng church. But no, no, no. Okay? Love does not give up. Okay? Love does not give up. Love doesn't give up on marriage. Love doesn't give up on family. Okay? Hey, students, no? I know, yeah. You no, know, right now, things are so bad. Like, no, and, and I get to see my children. Parang, ang klaseng schooling yung online, di ba? Parang nakakapagod talaga. That, that it's so easy. Check this out. It's so easy to simply give up. Hey, by the way, giving up doesn't mean sometimes just physically giving up. You could still be there. You could still be present in a Zoom meeting. But your heart is not there anymore. Your heart is unay, disengaged. No? In fact, yung heart mo na give up na long before yung physical body mo na give up. Siguro kung meron isang bagay na, no, na, na dinulot itong pandemic nito, eh, tinuturuan tayo nga na mag-disengage sa isa't isa eh. Like, hey, check this out, check this out. How many of you right now, you're actually listening to this, and at the same time, you're, you're not really into it? In fact, a couple of minutes ago, you've read it, you're already done, you've given up. I mean, you're still here. Technically, you're still listening. Yes, I'm talking to you. Okay, I'm talking to you right now. Some of you are cooking right now. <laughs> You're preparing dinner already. Eh? Ang problema nung nasa physical church side, hindi ka naman pwedeng bigla na lang magluto habang nasa service, di ba? You're actually there. You're focused. You have no choice. But now, since everything is online, no, some of you are thinking, I can just replay it later. Grabe, tin- no, it- merong isang bagay na ginagamit ang demonyo para matuto tayong mawalan ng puso para sa mga bagay-bagay, mawala ng heart, no? Na, to the point that eventually, you will, end, you will end up giving up and not persevering. Kasi unti-unti ka nang sinanay eh. Sinanay ka na na mag-disengage, sinanay ka na na okay lang yan, kahit mamaya mo na lang panuorin. Replay na lang. And then of course, nandun yung reality na nakakapagod. Dahil pagod ka na, Ayaw mo na. Hey, how I wish na sinabi dito, no? Hindi ka mapapagod. In fact, sabi dito, in due time, we will reap. No? And makakaranas na sa'yo, if we do not become weary. In other words, we, we, we should not allow that weariness to stop us. Love does not give up. Okay. Love does not give up. Okay. I cannot give up. You cannot give up. Don't give up. If you have somebody with you right now, tapos sabihin mo nga sa, sa, sa nanay mo, sa tatay mo, sa, sa kapatid mo, don't give up. Because love does not give up. Love never gives up. Okay. Number two. Love the hard work. Okay. Love the hard work. No, parang yun nga, eh, no? parang when you talk about work, okay, I, I think yung isang problem ngayon, no, is that a lot of people, they, ne- they, they don't really get to appreciate their work. Up until sometimes, it's gone. <laughs> no, dun, so, ang hirap na may trabaho. Ang hirap ng trabaho ko. Alam mo, mas mahirap kung wala kang trabaho. Tanungin mo yung walang trabaho. 
tanungin mo kung mas masaya siya dahil wala siyang trabaho. Kailangan mo lang na mamili eh. You know? Are you gonna love your work and love hard work? Okay? Or would you rather not work? Right? And really, in a time when pe- a lot of people are losing their jobs and their businesses are going down, hey, I think you should love your work and you should love the hard work. No? Tingnan natin yung ano, the way Jesus loves us. No? Look at Galatians chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us rid ourselves of every obstacle and sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race set before us. Looking only at Jesus, the originator and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before Him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Okay? You want to know how not to lose heart. No? You, look at, you look at Jesus. Okay? You look at Jesus. No, focus on Jesus. Look at Jesus. No? Okay? Don't be distracted by anything. Now, Okay. Ang ganda nung sinabi dito, eh, why look at Jesus? Not just, not just look, I'm sorry, not, yeah, not, not Galatians, no, but Hebrews. I made the same mistake as Pastor Rich did. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12. Okay. Let me just correct my notes already. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12. You guys, have been looking, looking only at Jesus, the original and perfecter of our faith. Now, ano yung sabihin, tingin ka lang sa picture ni Jesus? No, 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 no. Look at what He did. Look at the kind of love that he had. It was a love that, no, love, anyway. Okay, sabi dito, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. I mean, how would anyone want to suffer the cross? Eh, the natural man in us would want to quit, would want to give up, would not even want to do it. In fact, you know, Jesus being human, eh, He actually prayed, di ba? Sabi niya, Lord, Father, eh, let this cup pass from me. The human side of Him was telling Him, no, I, I don't want to do this. Who wants to suffer that way? Who, we talk about work. The work of redemption, the work of saving humanity. It literally you know, caused Jesus so much pain and suffering. It, it, it caused His life. That's, we talk about work. That is work. Eh, isipin mo, mahirap trabaho mo. Isipin mo yung ginawa ni Jesus. Ginawa niya para sa'yo. Eh, pero ano, but, but, you want to know why Jesus did that? He looked beyond the cross. Who for the joy set before Him. Eh, hindi niya lang tiningnan yung, hindi, okay, hindi, ano yung term? Ano yung time hindi ano eh, parang uh, ano yung mga tao ano, in-enjoy nila yung pagpapahirap sa sarili nila? What's that, what's that term? Okay. Yung, 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 oh, parang say this, no? parang, they, they, parang gusto kong pahirapan ang sarili ko. Okay. No, hindi, no, hindi naman sadista si Jesus sa kanya sarili. No? Hindi, hindi. He was willing to suffer this because of that joy. No? Okay. Pastor Rich said this no? Sabi niya Jesus loved everything That took him To the cross Why? Because he loved What the cross accomplished Check this out He didn't love the cross He loved What the cross accomplished and what did it accomplish? No? It's the salvation of humanity. It's us no? being able to be reconciled with God. It's us no? Be, no? having a chance for a new life, a new beginning. Okay? He endured the cross. He loved the hard work no? 
Okay? Because he loved what it accomplished. Okay? When you see things in that perspective, okay, bakit ka nag-aaral? Let's face it, hindi naman dahil kasi gusto mong pahirapan yung sarili mo mag-aaral. Eh. Pero pag tinignan mo, what is this going to accomplish? It's going to accomplish my dream. Nag-aaral ka kasi yung dream mo na gusto maging doktor. Gusto mong maging abogado. Gusto mong maging engineer. No? Bakit ka nagtatrabaho? No? Di, hindi dahil sa, yun nga, no? pinapahirapan mo lang sarili mo, pero no? mahal mo yung, yung ma-accomplish nito. Why do we Why do we do this every Sunday? Because what is what is being accomplished through this? And and yun nga, yung, yung yung part natin ako, I'm I'm glad that I'm able to preach but it's not just me preaching. There's a whole team of people here that is assisting me. And and you know we love what we need to be reminded of that. Because kung, kung ang iniisip lang natin yung ginagawa natin, no, I mean, napapagod ka eh, susuko ka. But we love what it accomplishes. No, just, just to know that a person came to know the Lord, that is worth it. That is worth it. Number three. Love does whatever it takes. Love does whatever it takes. You know, the kind of love, the kind of heart that Jesus had for us was a heart you know, that you know, whatever it takes. Yung, yung, uh, I think yung, yung line, one of the lines in the anyway, yung Avengers Endgame, parang what, I still remember that, whatever it takes. Yung na, pag mahal mo isang bagay, di ba? Walang mahirap. Sa tuto lang, bakit humihirap ang mga bagay-bagay? Kasi, hindi mo na mahal eh. Huh? Mas naging mahirap ang mga bagay-bagay pag wala na yung puso mo doon, pag disengage ka na. But then when your heart is into it, you know, when you love something so much, no, you're gonna do no, whatever it takes. No, and apparently Jesus set the standard for what love is. You know what it took? No? What is the greatest love? Simply like saying, Jesus, you want to know what the greatest love is? Okay? John chapter 15, verse 12 to 13. No? Sabi, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I don't know, that is just for me still, no, parang, that's why I think I, I need Jesus because this is, this is no easy thing to love one another. No, not, 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 in, the, not in our own standard of love, not in the way that I just want to love. We are commanded by what standard? Jesus sets the bar and it's a high bar. Ay, ano yung bar? No, na sinet ni Jesus, sabi niya, Mahalin niyo isa't isa, katulad ng pagmamahal ko sa inyo. And then you think about it, anong klaseng pagmamahal yun? Verse 13, sabi, a greater love, there's no greater love than this, than for a man to lay down his life for one's friend. Like literally, whatever it takes. And whatever it takes means, even when your whole life is at stake, that is what it means to love God. That is what it means to love people. No, nandung pa batay na parang whatever it takes. No, is that is that the kind of love that we have? Even for you know, yung passion natin. Eh. A lot of people somehow, I think you know, if there's one thing the pandemic also did was we kind of lost our passion. No, people who you know, in terms of their sport, no, dahil nga hindi ka engaged to sa ginagawa mo eh. But this uh, the other day, actually, I think just this week, no. Uh, I was telling my my daughter Catherine, no, because I, I I was encouraging her to watch documentaries instead 
of uh, kung ano-anong walang kwentang <laughs> mga palabas. No? So, I was, I was checking Netflix for any documentaries. And interestingly, one of the documentaries was the story on uh, Bethany Hamilton. Okay? Kung kilala niyo si Bethany Hamilton, well, she is a uh, ano, uh, world, skate, uh, world surfing no? champion. No? female div- you know, of course female division no? but but yung and, and she's a believer she she loves the lord but she uh, she met uh, na discover niya yung surfing at a young age she was i think already surfing at age parang 6 no and and no the moment that she surfed no parang sabi niya nga eh, no the moment she surfed she knew that one day she's going to be that's her dream she's going to be a professional surfboarder surfer but I think at age 8, kung ako nagkakamali, she met an accident. In fact, she was already winning competitions at that age level. In fact, yun yung parang national championships no, at that age category. She was already winning. Big time. Champion. And then, she met an accident. One time when she was surfing with her friend, I think it was, it, it was even a uh, 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 championship. Ano? She was bitten by a tiger, a 15-foot tiger shark. No, nakagat yung nakagat siya at literally naputol yung kanyang kamay, yung yung kanang kamay niya. No, I mean, right or I I think left, left no. Can you imagine no? That that all her dreams, in fact, lungkot-lungkot yung parents niya because they've been working so hard for her dream even at a young age. No, her dream, her heart, her passion. And just like that, no, it seemed that everything is gone. Right? Now, you need to understand, if, for those of you who have tried surfing, eh, no, napakahalaga nung, I mean, I don't think of any other person in the world who doesn't have an arm and yet still able to surf. Eh? So, wala siyang kamay. Number one, no, para, para ka makasurf yung, 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 no, para ka makaakyat sa board, di ba? Habang umaasasabayan mo yung ano, yung wave, yung alon, no? Tapos tsaka ka ngayon aakyat dun sa paddle board, dun sa surfboard na tinatawag, no? At para ka makaakyat dun, ang gagamitin mo, sasampa mo, gagamitin mo yung dalawang kamay mo, takakatatayo, habang uma, and, and, habang umaandar ka, no? Being carried by a wave, and that is difficult. I mean, I tried that once and like, Oh my goodness, this is hard. It's not an easy thing. Much more do the tricks and become champion. And to do that without literally walang... And the balance, diba? Yun yung balance na eh. That's why, diba? When you try to balance, you always put your arms. It's so natural, diba? When you try to balance yourself. No, because you try to balance yourself with your arms. Eh. And now, she, she, she doesn't have an, an arm. He cannot even get on a surf. But I think in just... Four months long, he was back in the water. You might think that that would have traumatized her, be afraid of sharks, be afraid to go back into the water. But you know what? No long story short, he's no, she's a world surfing champion. She you, in, in the documentary that, that me and Catherine watched, no, she surfed this uh, what's what do you call no? Waves, literally, parang five stories high. It's called, no, Jaws waves, no. And ito yung ito yung surf na inaabangan nila yung yung ay, yung 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 waves na yung pang may bagyo. Ay inaabangan nila. Ayan ayan ayan. Ito ito yung ito yung nakakamatay na no. Na, imagine when surfing in waves, five stories high. And then that's that's who she is right now. She, no, why? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Andrew Car- Car- Carnegie said the following, Sabia, the average person puts only 25% of his energy and ability to his work. The world takes off its hat to those who put in more than 50% of their capacity and stands on its head for those few far between souls who devote 100%. Are you still 
No, yun ba yung heart mo pa rin, whatever it takes? Are you still all in? Allow me to close. No? If we are to get our voices back as a church, if we are really to be no, that voice called to prepare, no, prepare the hearts of people for, for Jesus, then we need to get our hearts back. We need to no, engage our heart back again. It, it, ito yung katotohanan, you know? It's difficult to get and stay motivated about something that your heart isn't into. Ulitin ko, ha? Mahirap no, to get and stay motivated about something that your heart isn't into. Example, if, you're, eh, if your heart is not into Jesus, it's not into your church, it's not into the ministry, it's not into marriage, it's not into, ki- into your kids or your job, everything will be what? Difficult. Mahirap. Ang problema, alam nyo, ang daming ang tao ngayon who are disengaged. No, wala yung puso nila doon sa ginagawa nila. You know, honestly, I, I cannot imagine that. I cannot bring myself to an idea no, of, of doing something that your heart is not into it. Eh, di, pansin niyo di ba? Kahit yung simpleng, yung, sabi nga ni Pastor Rich kanina, no, everything else will just be a chore. Parang trabaho lang. Even chores itself, di ba? Have you ever been asked to do a chore and your heart is not into it, no? Pero may simpleng paghuhugas ng pinggan, sino dito, no? Hirap na hirap kang maghuhugas ng pinggan. <laughs> okay, diba? Di paghuhugas ka ng pinggan, pero may mga tao talagang, talagang, <laughs> hirap na hirap ka, maghuhugas ng pinggan. Alam mo bakit? Wala yung puso mo dun eh. Bakit, bakit ang hirap mag-aral? Hindi ko sinasabing madaling mag-aral, pero yun nga, mahirap na nga yung mat. Mas mahirap pa dahil wala puso mo. Wala puso mo. Yung mahirap, mas hihirap. Eh, mahirap ang pag-aasawa. Mahirap yan. Pero pag ang puso mo, wala na sa asawa, dinis-engage mo na ang puso mo. Mas lalo mahirap. Bakit maraming tao ngayon nahirapan sa church? Because their heart is not into it. They're not fully engaged. They're not all in. Church, is about time that we are, we, we bring our hearts to a level. We are all in once again. Eh? And we, just, just a couple of ano, information here, no? According to the Gallup poll, no, about 70% of American workers are disengaged. <laughs> and I think that goes for, for most likely all over the world. No? 70% of all people are disengaged in their work. Okay? Check this out. Actively disengaged employees alone are estimated to cost U.S. companies $500 billion annually. $500 billion annually. Okay? You know, sabi nga na, mayroon daw dalawang klaseng disengaged na mga tao eh, no? First is, they simply disengage. They are physically there. But just putting in their time and going through the motions. No, you, na, yung, yung iba sa inyo, maaring nandun, nandun ngayon eh, no? Yung, yung disengage yung heart. They are physically there. But they're just, yun nga, putting in their time and going through the motions. How many people are when they attend the services, they're simply going through the motions. Yung pangalawa, yun ay actively disengaged, no? Ito yung grupo na they're just unhappy. And they, sabi dito, no, this group isn't just unhappy at what they're doing, and they make sure everyone knows it. <laughs> In other words, bahala ka na. Ayaw ka na. Okay. Ayaw mo na kausapi asawa mo. Ayaw mo na kausapi anak mo. Ayaw mo na, sumuko ka na eh. You're disengaged. Let's engage our hearts once again. 
Beth Moore said the following, Trying to obey and serve God before we've come to love Him can be exhausting. Let me repeat that. Trying to obey God, trying to serve God before we've come to love Him can be exhausting. God doesn't simply want us to obey Him. God doesn't simply want us to serve Him. Otherwise, He would start with, you no, know, obey me, serve me. Ne, ne, sabi. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. He wants your heart first. He wants your mind into it. He wants your strength. Nga, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Otherwise, mapapagod lang tayo eh. And ayaw ng Lord na parang napapagod ka. Diba? Si Jesus nga ang offer niya, Come to me those who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. He wants us to have, not to have rest. He wants our lives to be restful, peaceful, hindi conflicted. Nung bakit conflicted? Kasi iba yung ginagawa mo sa nais ng puso mo. Doon, yun yung nakakapagod eh, yung disconnect. Disconnect. You know, when your heart is not engaged, you no, know, when your heart is not engaged, everything becomes a chore. When you love God, you no, know, on the other hand, when you love God, you connect your heart to what you're doing. Is is your heart in it? No. And if you think about it, this literally applies to every aspect of your life. Simula ko muna dun sa ano marriage for those of you married people and you know this if you do not engage your heart your heart will wander your heart will wander away if you do not fully commit you will disengage if you disengage you will leave check this out if you don't fully commit you will disengage and if you disengage you will leave in the worst part, no, I, I heard this from my pastor. Sabi, some people leave without ever leaving, and that's the worst. Marami mga nagsasamang mag-asawa. And sabi niya, that's that's probably you no, know, the loneliest place in in marriage. You no, know, and when you're already left without ever leaving, and that's why you're so unhappy. Tintin, marami mga mag-asawa ngayon, civil na lang. Nagsasama sila, nasa isang bubong, pero wala na puso na sa isa't isa. And nothing is more lonely than mar- being married. <laughs> Check this out. Nothing is more lonely than being married and alone. Is that even possible? You're married and you're alone? Yes. That's why it's so important to engage your heart. Engage your heart. No? Huwag mo mong sabihin na, ano, paano ba tayo nag-disengage? Yung nga eh, no? dahil nasaktan ka na, hindi na kita kakausapin. Okay? And, and I, we think that no, that, accomplishes any, that accomplishes something. No. It just simply what? No, causes our heart to be distant. Hindi na nag-uusap. Hindi. No, wag kayong, no, wag, okay, wag dapat tumigil yung pag-uusap. Minsan masakit pag-uusap, eh, pag-usapan natin, hindi, ayaw mo eh. Hindi naman siya nagsusuri. Hindi, pag-usapan nyo. Engage your heart. Wag kang papayag na hindi, hindi, engage, na matatapos yung araw na or linggo na parang wala lang. Okay? Sa mga anak, ganun din. Children. No, you must engage your heart. And, and sometimes, you know, crazy in this, you know, and, and you know what, why I can teach this? Because I've, I've seen this happen in my, li- in my life, in our marriage, you know, it's parang minsan ayaw mo nalang mag-usap in our family. Eh, because, you know, okay, no, nakakatawa, no? Okay, let's face it. No? Ma- gusto natin na magkakasama tayo. Tama nga? Pero hindi palagi. <laughs> what do I mean? <laughs> I mean, I love you, but no, it, it doesn't mean, yun nga eh, parang, oh, okay. 
sino dito yung para dahil nga minsan malayo kayo, nagkakaroon ng para yung natatarm natin na mimiss. Ngayon, wala ka na opportunity yung mamiss yung asawa mo, anak mo, palaki nandyan, nakakainis na. <laughs> so, kailangan natin, kailangan yun na para ano yun, na, 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 pero ngayon, dahil nga pandemic, ito na naman, lockdown na naman tayo. Ano, 24-7 magkakasama. Nagiging toxic na. No? But it does not mean it disengage natin ang ating mga sarili. Okay? Church, ministry, serving. You must engage your heart. You know why a lot of people start to quit on church? Because they never yes, they, Okay, when the pandemic started, a lot of you, you were not thinking of quitting on church. You were not thinking of, like, not coming to church. That's, that's far from, from your thoughts. But then, something was lost. And you know what was lost? No? Yung physical engagement natin in terms of work, in terms of serving. No, no, what? Even though you, you had, before, wala namang question, you wanted to volunteer. Now, it's not that you don't want to volunteer. It's because you can't. You can't. Na wala yung mga ministries natin. And apparently, hindi natin napansin dahil na wala yung opportunities natin, no? Unti-unting lumayo yung puso. Okay? And then you have thoughts of no, no, here in my notes so too many people imagine what it would be now how many of you you have no, you have imagined the thought of no, quitting or quit leading in the church <laughs> you know why, why we have thoughts like that the moment the moment you start thinking and entertaining it's a matter of time it's only a matter of time that you will quit no yeah no you know you already entertain that thought that seed in your heart and you're now talking about it and it's just a matter of time you're gonna do it they quit Engage your heart. Career or business, no? Okay. Pagdating naman sa career or business, okay, yun na narinig natin yung term na, I've been burnt out. Burnt out na ako. You think about Paul, the apostle. Okay. You will never hear of Paul talking about being burnt out. He talked about being beaten okay, several times. He talked about being stoned to death. He talked about ship being shipwrecked. But despite all the suffering, he never said anything about quitting. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Do it with all your heart. And then, another application is your friendships. Let me read this from my notes. Maybe the reason your friendships are not true is because your heart is not true. Maybe you use people, if not for things. Maybe you use them for emotional dump or as an accessory to your life. Maybe you should engage your heart and love your friends by being concerned about them. Okay? You know that that's make a lot of a lot of sense, you know. Means okay? that sabi na friends natin pero actually, you know, we're just using them as an emotional dump. When we say we're opening up, you know, it's not we're engaging our heart, but we're just, you know, parang, ina, 
nagano na yung parang nag naglalabas ka lang ng sama ng loob. Sama ng loob na hindi maubos-ubos at matapos-tapos. How do we How do we How do we start? How do we engage? One, guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, we read this already a while ago. Keep your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart. Above all things, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Keep your heart with all vigilance. Keep your heart from what? Bantayan mo daw. Bantayan mo sa bitterness. Bantayan mo yung heart mo na huwag mapagod. No? Bantayan mo yung heart mo na hindi mag-take ng offense. Minsan hindi mo mapipigilan na ma-hurt tayo ng mga bagay-bagay, pero bantayan mo na, yun nga, yun, yun nga, pag-offended ka na kasi that's when you disengage. Eh. Pag nag-isip ka na ng masama, whether sa boss mo, sa trabaho mo, sa asawa mo, yun na yun. Doon tayo mag-ingat, bantayan mo, bantayan mo na huwag makapasok yung mga bagay na yun. Kasi doon na magsisimula eh. Pantayan mo yung, yung puso mo for the Lord. Pantayan mo yung puso mo for the church. No, don't you let anyone tell you negative about, about the church, about the family of God, about the church that, di ba, that God used to, no, for, for you to, to come to know to Him. Why? Di ba? Guard your heart. Guard your heart from, from deceit, from slander. Guard your heart. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 31, sabi naman dito, rid your heart of all offenses. Offenses that you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Rid your heart of all offenses. Rid, I mean, let's rid our hearts of offenses, no? Offenses that we did and offenses that were committed to us and get a new heart. How do we, how do we get a new heart? Focus. Going back to the verse that we started a while ago, ang sabi dun sa ano, okay? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. In other words, focus your heart on Jesus. Alam niyo mga, ano, some, I heard this from someone before, no? Focus your heart on something long enough until you feel something. And you know what? I've, I've proven that to be true. I've proven that to be true. One time I felt that I, my heart for, for lost people was, was, ano, parang, parang dull, parang, I cannot bring myself to love people. You know what I did? I asked the Lord, sabi ko sa Lord, I remember, I, I remember this so vividly. I was still in my college days and I told the Lord, Lord, I want to see what you see. I want to see how how you see people. And, and, and at that time, I remember it was you know, it was a uh, there was a break between classes, and I was sitting in the humanities building of UP Los Banos. And pe- as people were going out, I just started to look at people, and then I started to see somehow as I focus on them, grabi lang yung burden, no. As I, I started to look, I started to focus, and then, and I started to have a heart for them. Okay. You know how to stir up your emotions. You focus. Even this this works in in marriage. I remember, I, I remember one time I was just, you no, know, I was thinking about the, my wife, Zisha, you no, know, and and as I was thinking about what what. No, I wanted to tell her, and I started to think about the things that she did. All of a sudden, there's this wave of emotion. Like literally, like I was. It's not that I fell out of love, but it was just, wow, falling in love. 
as I, I started to look at her, uminsi tingin ko yung pictures niya, mas lalong nag pa yung heart ko sa kanya. Focus. Focus. Focus on the Lord. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Nung sabi sa Job 31 verse 7, look at this. New King James Version says, If my step has turned away from the way, or my heart walk after my eyes. Eh, did, did you see that? If my step has turned from the way, and my heart walk after my eyes. In other words, no, kung saan ka kasi nakatingin, doon pupunta yung puso mo eh. Doon pupunta yung direction mo. No, kung saan ka nakatingin, ano ba yung tingitingnan mo? Look to Jesus again. Look to the church again. Look, look. No? <laughs> You know, sometimes in yun yung, yung church, no? When you see the problems, when you see as ako as a pastor, let me just be open with you. See the the challenges, no? People, no? Parang sometimes you're know, quitting and, and yeah, you just want to give up and lose heart as well, like balakay sa buhay nyo. And then, you know why I I, I always want ano yung 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 pinapakita natin na yung ano yung together na song and sabi ko put all the pictures of the church there every time I would look at that and then hear the songs I cannot help but love the people people that are not even there I mean I just I realize I love these people look at them, you focus. You look at God, you focus. You'll be surprised. Your heart will follow. Oswald Sanders says this, looking back leads to turning back. You know why you, why a lot of people are backslidden right now? You look back. You look back. Looking back leads to turning back. Now look the other way. Look to Jesus. That's it. If we are to be a voice in this generation, a prophetic voice, it all begins with the heart. Church, let's let's engage our hearts once again. First of all, to God, to one another, your family, your your wife, your husband, the church. Find ways to serve. I don't know. Yeah, just volunteer. Just look, look, look at your, look at the pictures. Come on, look at, look at where we have been through, what we have been through, and I'm sure something's gonna stir up there. Toto yung relationship eh. You know, peki yung mga yung peki ba yun? Nagganu na lang, bibitawa mo na lang, no? Let's get a new heart. Let's ask God to give us a new heart. Let's go back to our first love. And as we go back to our first love, I believe that's when we will become a voice to this generation. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just humbly come before you this, this evening, Lord God. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, if we have disengaged. If we have entertained offenses, we have allowed our hearts, our hearts to be hurt to the point that we end up quitting, giving up on each other, giving up on relationships, giving up on the church, giving up on our faith. Lord, we don't, we don't want to be disengaged. Lord, we don't want our hearts far from you. We don't want to be disengaged with you, God. Tonight, Lord God, we we just place our hearts before you, Lord. We remember you. We remember what you have done for us on the cross. And yes, Lord, we look to you, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But we also look, Lord God, we, we look 
our family, we look at our wife, we look at our husband. We look at each other the first time that we fell in love. So we look at the church, we look at the people, Lord God. Lord, we just want to give you everything again, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we just worship the Lord right now? to challenge everyone tonight first of all if this is your first time joining us here in destiny i want you to know that jesus loves you he has never given up on you he loves you so much that you know sabi niya greater love has no man than this and for a man to lay down his life for a friend and then that's that's the kind of love that jesus did for us it's a love that he offered for us his own life as a sacrifice and, it, and, it, and if tonight you want to say i want to give my life to the lord i want to give my heart to the lord maybe that's what's lacking in your life you've given your heart to so many things you've given your heart to friends to relationship and it disappointed you you've given your heart to work and and it disappointed you it frustrated you no but you know what the bible says no Anyone who puts their trust in Him will not be disappointed. They will not. It's not. It doesn't mean you're gonna have trouble. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have. You're not gonna magkakaroon ng mga pagsubok. But the thing is, you will not be disappointed. The Lord doesn't disappoint people who trust Him with all their hearts. And so, if tonight you wanna say, I wanna give my heart to the Lord. I'm not talking about religion, by the way. Sana nga tayo sa religion eh. Yung may religion. No, it's doing godly things without your heart. That's the problem. Diba? 
sino mo pupunta sa church? No, wala yung puso mo doon, no? Pampalipas oras lang para masabi lang nakapagsimba ka. That's religion. Nagpe-pray ka out of ritual, out of tradition, not out of your heart. Kasi wala kang relationship, sino yun na nagsasalita ka pero parang wala yung puso mo, hindi mo makausap si Lord. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about a real heart relationship with Jesus. Because he is real, he's not religion. He loves you and he died for you on the cross. And He's going to give you a brand new life if you put your trust in Him. Okay? And if you want to do that tonight, you want to say, I'm, I want to repent of my sins. Yun nga, kailangan may pagsisisi din. Kailangan may turning away from sin, from your past life. Ayoko na to, pagod na ako dito, pagod na ako sa kasalanan. And I want to give my heart to the Lord. A brand new heart. And ask Lord for a brand new heart. If that is you, okay, I'd like to pray for you. And then if that is you, just, just wherever you are, just... just Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand right now. And I'll, I'll be praying for you. And then also, maybe maybe you're one that has given your heart to the Lord before, but somehow, yes, you, you got disengaged. Your heart, your heart is not there anymore. You're not, your heart is not in the church anymore. Your heart is not with Jesus anymore. You've been deceived. You, you've had not turned your heart. Mo. But tonight, this message is for you. You know that you have to recover your voice. You need to recover your heart. If you want to recommit your life to the Lord, go ahead, just lift up your hand as well. And let's pray together right now. Sige, let's pray. If you want to recommit your life to God, if you want to commit your life to Jesus for the first time, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Go ahead, pray it with me. Repeat it after me. Lord Jesus, today, Lord, lumalapit po ako sa inyo. And first of all, I repent of all my sins. Patawarin mo ako, Lord, sa aking mga kasalanan. Patawarin mo ako, Lord, sa pagtalikod ko sa iyo. But today, I am committing my life to you. I'm giving you my heart. Take my heart, Lord. Change it. Soften it. Lord, take away all the bitterness, the pain, mga samahan ng loob. Lord, take away yung kapaguran, take away yung frustration, take away yung depression sa aking puso and fill it with a brand new heart. Fill it with joy. Fill it with your love. Cleanse it, Lord. It's starting today. I will follow you and love you with all my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, for everyone who prayed that prayer tonight, Lord, I pray indeed. Dinisin mo po kami. Paramdam mo sa amin na, Lord God, napatawad mo kami. Holy Spirit, right now, touch them wherever they are. Lord, let your cleansing power, Lord God, be upon us right now. Wash away all our past, our memories of, of pain, of, of, of bitterness, Lord God, of even being molested and, and abused, Lord. Right now, heal that in the name of Jesus. That indeed, Lord God, today will be a brand new start. We will engage our hearts once again back to you back to the church, back to our families, back to our real friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or Log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph slash give.